upgrades to the Auckland City Mission, East Coast's Rugby Park Grandstand and Blenheim's Art Gallery are among the projects getting a boost from the government's $3 billion infrastructure fund. The government has unveiled how money set aside in the COVID response and recovery fund will be allocated across regions. More than 150 projects have been given the green light and are expected to create more than 20,000 jobs. Today, the government gave a flavour of the investments, announcing details of 12 projects across the country and promising more in the coming weeks. Political reporter Yvette McCullough has more. The government put out the call for shovel-ready projects to help kick-start the COVID-19 economic rebuild. Local councils, community groups and the private sector responded, submitting nearly 2,000 projects across 40 different sectors. Finance Minister Grant Robertson says they've whittled this down to more than 150 projects that will give the sector a pipeline of work. This is about ensuring ongoing work opportunities. Individual jobs within them will come and go as projects are completed, but this is about that certainty that we constantly hear from the construction sector they want. Infrastructure Minister Shane Jones says all of the projects will be ready to begin within the next 12 months, and the package also supports projects that were already underway. He says the government is focused on housing and urban development, energy, climate resilience and environmental projects. This is to dispel the misapprehension that, uh, as the infrastructure minister, I'm infatuated with grey infrastructure. Mr Jones says there's also a big focus on community development. This announcement is not purely about the big end of town and infrastructure has to enable a greater quality of life for people down at the grassroots level. Other projects announced today include a $7 million investment in West Coast ports, advancing plans to create a bulk shipping precinct, creating around 300 jobs. Buller District Mayor Jamie Klein says it's a significant investment. Which secures and allows the opportunity for growth of the fishing industry, which has been really important uh, economic contributor to Westport for many years. Taranaki is also getting $37 million to replace its thermal drying facility, which turns biosolids from wastewater into household fertiliser. New Plymouth Mayor Neil Holdham says this will create around 77 jobs and will be a great shot in the arm for the community. It will provide excellent jobs for our engineering sector at a time when they need work and will position council well in terms of this is a, a long-term community asset that helps us protect the environment. The government also revealed today how the fund will be divvied up across the regions. Auckland will get 500 million, Canterbury 300 million, Otago 260 million and the Wellington region will get 185 million. Other regions will receive between 85 to 170 million. Mr Robertson says they've tried to strike a balance. Every region in New Zealand has been affected by COVID-19, so nobody is in a position where they haven't been, but there are some regions where the population is larger, there are some regions where the impact is larger, and so therefore you'll, you'll see that reflected in those numbers. Infrastructure New Zealand CEO Paul Blair says this is welcome news, but the government needs to move rapidly from announcements to action so that jobs can be created and saved. It will certainly give hope. Having said that, I am aware of several large infrastructure companies that are going through change proposals and unfortunately laying off staff now. The way to uh, mitigate that is to get quickly through into the detail, to do what we can to get the money flowing. National leader Todd Muller isn't so hopeful. He says the government has a track record of talking a big game but delivering nothing. Their two signature policies that they went to the election with, Kiwi Build and Light Rail, both promised with much fanfare. Uh, total inability to deliver uh, and that lack of capacity and competency to deliver will be this government's legacy. Mr Muller says the rollout of big dollar announcements in the coming weeks in the lead up to the election is cynical politicking. The government says they're still doing their due diligence on some projects to make sure they stack up. But they weren't shying away from the fact they will be milking photo ops out in the regions, with Mr Jones saying he wouldn't want to break a habit. From Parliament for Checkpoint, Yvette McCullough.